springtime in Alaska here. And there goes one of the dogs. Kratos, come here. Come on. Get over here. Come on. So time to start taking on, getting ready for the summer. Come on, buddy. Come on. Let's go. He's our, uh, uh, he's about seven months old. Mixed between uh, uh, Irish Wolfhound, German Shepherd, and Newfoundland. And there's Axia, our German Shepherd. She's, well, she bosses him around even though they're about the same size. So, we got the boat out here. And the reason I'm making this video primarily is due to some lack of information that I found doing a project on this boat. And actually, you know, a little bit different from a couple of my tractor videos. Actually, the boat right now is hooked up to the old Branson. I backed her in here. Got the blankets over the door keep some of the heat in the garage. So, before I get started, a little bit about the boat. This is an SJX 2170. It uh, has a two-stroke Mercury Optimax Sport Jet inboard motor. Uh, it can run in some extremely shallow water. Uh, 21 foot long, hence the and 70 inches wide, hence the name 2170. Um, run about 45, 50 mile an hour wide open throttle. And as a it's a fun little boat. It was actually my late father's. Uh, he passed away almost four years ago now. And this is how I go out on the weekends in the summertime and hang out with dad. Uh, I try to take really good care of this thing because, like I said, it was dad's. So, in any case, um, the reason I'm making this video, uh, hopefully it'll help somebody else out there, is this unit right here. This is a Scott water jet trim nozzle for the sport jet, for the Mercury sport jet. They came in various horsepower ranges. Uh, a lot of the ones that you see out right now are the 175s, the 200 Optimaxes, uh, I think some of the 210s. Hey, go lay down. Uh, I think they made some 240s and 250s. I have searched the internet when I before I got this and after I got this set up and everything for information and jet boat forums oh god i just absolutely nothing or or damn near nothing i should say um this and like for the the more i guess you could say muscle car boats or muscle boat jet boats and everything the ones with like the big block chevys and fords and everything they would consider something call something like this a place diverter so what it does is this nozzle goes left and right of course to do the steering and everything but what this one does in addition if you see the hydraulic ram here is it tilts back and forth to actually allow you to adjust trim so as far as bolt up to the mercury engine because that's what's made for because it's made for the mercury engine and pump setup which is that pump and engine setup is put on multitudes of boats out there. So this, some of this is just really specific to uh, the SJX boat here and the way it's designed and everything. So initially when I first got it, everything on this bolted up to the pump and everything real nicely. No issues. Here's where I started running into issues, and I think this may be an SJX thing. If we can go in here, we can see this ledge right here, where this little ram runs underneath. And you can see how tight it fits in there. I had to, on this, on this mount right here, oh, focus. I had to cut the ears off of it and make new ears dropping the mount holes down by i'd say roughly a quarter inch for it to even fit and even at that it still runs in a bind i actually have a spare one of these uh for when or if this one uh, goes out because of the angles and everything it works at it doesn't have it's it's putting a lot of pressure on this ram the real correct way is if you see these little black marks there 
I had marked them as probably to have the transom notched out or somehow clearance there. Um, another issue that I did not exactly like was right here on this mount where this bolt comes through here. From Scott Waterjet, this is a quarter by 20 countersunk uh, bolt screw that comes through here. This Heim joint has a 5 16 opening hole. So of course that's gonna be all sorts of sloppy and everything. So I actually removed that. Got a 5 16 bolt. In fact, I'll show you the one that I put in there because I bought two of them. Oh, where to go? Up here. This is the exact bolt I put in there. I cut this off just a little bit above the countersink, probably about where my fingernail's at and everything, and it fit in there, put a couple tack welds, and of course I had to cut it way down and everything. But now that hot inside of that heim joint is riding on this smoother uh, section of the bolt and everything. Of course, by doing that, you know, it doesn't have a lot of threads because yeah, it can't stick up real far. And I'll get into the reason why on that because there is a reverse bucket that goes over this and everything. Which is something I've been working on here. And I tried all sorts of things. I made a different mount here and everything. Bring it up and actually had the ram mounted up out here and everything. And it worked. It would have worked and everything. Get the full tilt up and down and everything. But the missing part I had... a for that and everything at the time was a reverse bucket because it had to be machined on a section to clear this uh, ram right here. And it was like, uh, well, I can do all this work, but I don't know if it's actually gonna work. So, but overall, everything bolted right up. So, that, at least for the SJX, that mount has to be modified or you're going to end up having to notch this hole, notch the uh, transom right here. The one thing I'm not is a fabricator and everything. I can turn a wrench and I don't, I'm not too scared of getting into stuff. But that might be something that if this does not work and everything, I might end up having to take it to one of the local boat shops and have that clearance and everything. And I don't know how long that's going to last like that. Um, but so move forward on a little bit of the critique of the install of this, <coughs> excuse me. So <laughs> right here is the reverse bucket. Now from Scott Waterjet, they give you a diagram of how this is supposed to be notched out up here. And I think it's like 40 millimeters wide and in and everything. And I had taken this thing actually to a machine, a machine shop, had it notched and it was straight out. The problem was, is after I go to install it, after I got all that figured out, is that even by their specs, after I had it mounted up on here, this mount, when you start going lock to lock, would rub on it. Okay, well that's not good. And then something else that would happen is my rudder cable right here would rub as well. So if we go back over here and you look at this, I've had to clearance this section out. Now, I know there's different variations of these reverse buckets from Mercury. You know, this is the genuine Mercury reverse bucket and everything that came with it. So I really can't call say that their specs are off at all. But it is a little bit frustrating when you get something like this and you don't... They, Say, yeah, bolt right up. Here's the specs here. There you go. And it doesn't work. Not so much with the clearance of the transom like I was showing you on the ram and everything because that's how the boat was built. And SJX sets that engine in that little bit further for whatever reason or builds the transom out a little bit further for whatever reason. Don't care. That's, that's not Scott Waterjet's fault and everything. And I really can't say that this is either for this and for this right here. Well, I can kind of point a little bit of a finger at them for that. 
but there's so many variables in the boating world on stuff like this it's it's hard to do uh especially like when there's variants well what are you getting into over there i think he just snuck past the blankets and run around outside the other thing is you can see this orange line right here somewhat drawn that line as a reference that i might have to actually clearance out extra on this reverse bucket so that the water stream coming out of the nozzle here when it is at full up where it's at right now doesn't actually just start hitting into the water but into the reverse bucket now, i might be able to adjust that out with some with the cable and everything here's the this is a shift cable for the reverse bucket i'm still working on that but uh yeah that's uh, uh i mean stuff like this i mean i guess a guy should always be expecting that and everything other thing was a shift cable here and the, again this could be something to do with a boat but when i actually finally got all this figured out and everything this shift cable was about a quarter inch too short then well up here i had to take apart my controls and there was actually three different settings where the cable hooked up so i got it hooked up on there's like if I was going to do a draw a diagram, you got a bolt hole here, bolt hole here, and a bolt hole here for a shift cable. It was in this one, and I moved it to this one, and it seems to be working. But I'm going to need to do a little bit of adjusting on it to see if I can't get that reverse bucket to completely clear that nozzle before I start getting in there and cutting that out or taking it to a machine shop and having that all chowdered out because i don't know that's a lot of material to remove and i don't know how that's going to actually uh influence the reverse performance of this the reverse performance on this boat i i i've had other jet boats in the past and the reverse performance on this is is not the greatest and everything I see other, you know, some videos and everything, guys pulling this exact same boat up onto shore and then backing it off, literally beaching it, backing it off. I've tried to do that same thing with this boat, even getting on the gas. Yeah, it's a no-go. I don't know what they're doing. So the other critique I have of this setup, I'll go over here. Here's the stock nozzle. So from Mercury... There's actually, it actually has a self-bailing system for the bilge and everything. That's what this little nub right here is. And here is the hose that comes off of it. And what happens is this hose right here goes up to, well, there's the barbed fitting I had to pull out of the pump. And as water is going through here, it creates a, it does a venturi effect, creating a vacuum on this hose. And there's a screen in the bilge of the, of the boat where it will suck water out and spit it out through here into the jet stream and everything actually keeping the boat pretty dry on the inside there is zero embossments or anything on this one for that and i know a lot of boats just run a regular electric build pump and everything but you know that's not something hard that they could have added I, you know, I, I, I just, I don't re know really what to say on that, you know. And then also in the installation instructions, not to even mention anything. Maybe that's something that's just indicative of this particular Mercury Sport Jet engine and pump assembly. I don't know. But it really would not have been hard for them to put a nozzle right up in here to hook that up. That's actually something that's pretty nice because especially... If it's raining and you're running up on the Alaskan River and everything and it's pouring down, uh, boats start to become bathtubs. And having it in some way of bailing it, bailing out the bilge, aside from relying on an electric pump, is actually pretty nice. I don't think anybody would disagree with me on that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's not a showstopper, but it would be nice for them to actually have put something in the installation manual about hey this is 
going to end up having to be deleted. You're going to need to put a plug. I don't know if we can see it up in there. But right back up in there is where the plug will end up going. That's where the hose come out of. So, yeah. Oh, one of my critiques on that. I haven't I haven't even fired up the boat or ran it with this yet. So, hopefully it uh I it's not so much, you know, a lot of guys will put something like this on a boat because they have issues with porpoising or wanting to uh level out loads. There's a lot of guys will use a boat like this for going out uh moose hunting or caribou hunting, bear hunting, whatever. I'm doing it more for trying to get I'm, do, I'll, I'm doing it a little bit more for the performance aspect of it, trying to get a little bit more of the hull out of the water, get a little bit of a faster cruise speed and everything. So that's, uh, that's kind of my first semi-informational thing about that. Just stuff to watch out for. Oh, something else too. So this kit that I got from Scott included the wiring harness and everything. And their directions is to literally run wires. I mean, it came with the wiring and everything to do this, but to run wires from the battery to a switch back to the pump. No relays. I wasn't too keen on doing that and everything. So I ended up, oh, let me see if I can get into here. Uh, let's see if I can get the phone on it here. Down there, somewhere. There's a... Oh yeah, I can just see it. I got a reversible relay from Napa. It was only 30, 40 bucks. A little bit of added insurance and everything. Uh, so, yeah, you know, do that a little bit different. Again... I mean, the, their wiring instructions would have worked. Yeah, it was fuse protected and everything. But I really didn't like how they were suggesting to do that. Other thing, too, that I did at the same time while I had everything pulled apart back here, is I put a new impeller in it. And this is going to be a little source of contention with me. Of course, you can't... You're not going to be able to see the impeller I put in there. But it was a Solace Concorde impeller. Again, I go to look for reviews online of this impeller. I haven't ran the boat with it. I don't know how it's going to perform. I think I found, I think, I think I may have found one review, but the guy doesn't call, he just says it's a Solace impeller for a, a Sport J. He doesn't say it's the Concorde and it's an older post and everything. But there are literally no reviews that I can find of a Solace Concorde impeller in a sport jet. I've seen on a few forums where it's been, somebody's asked about it, and then somebody else hijacks the forum about talking about other impellers, and they go off on a tangent on there and completely stay away from talking about the Solace impeller. Dude. The guy's asking a question about a Solace impeller. Stop talking about high skew impellers. Stop talking about the stock Mercury impeller. Please, he's asking about the Solace impeller. So, maybe I'll do a little bit of a review on it uh, after everything thaws out. <laughs> of course, uh, lakes and rivers right now are pretty solid and everything. But to give you an idea of the Solace impeller I put in it, here's the stock impeller I pulled out of it. It's got some wear. It's got some uh, some rock chips and everything in it and everything. And it actually wasn't working bad. It was starting to slip a little bit at wide open throttle going across lakes and everything. Just a touch. Now, if you're familiar with any of this stuff, you know that guys will take and have a stainless steel liner put in. Oh, they'll have a stainless steel liner put into this section right here, or else the impeller is just, you got a stainless steel impeller that's rubbing against aluminum and everything, and they chowder out, and then they, you lose performance and everything. My dad had already had the stainless steel liner put into it, along with this impeller. 
And it's a little bit sharp on the edges there. It was a real tight fit when he put it in and everything. Pretty much the clearance fit itself. And you can tell there's a sharp lip right there of where it was doing that and everything. So, don't know how tight. I mean, the, the solace impeller went right in there without a problem and everything. I, I didn't put a feeler gauge on to uh, find out what the clearance was. But to give you an idea of what the solace impeller looks like. So... I could find three basic different kinds of impellers for this engine. You had the stock one, you had the high skew, and the high skew, it, it looks really interesting and everything because it comes off from this point kind of almost like a corkscrew all the way around here up here to the tip and everything. It'd be like this tip of this blade to come around, keep on coming up, and it would end up like somewhere over here. A lot of overlap and all four blades were like that. The Solace Concord, it kind of comes up here and kind of has almost like a dog ear that comes up and back around. So it has a little bit more overlap. I can't remember. Uh, I remember I had them side by side. I can't remember what the differences were eyeballing them on the pitch or anything. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, durability performance wise. Uh, any sort of differences. Uh, I mean, just a new impeller would make a difference. This one, I'll end up taking it to one of the local shops and they'll send it off and have it reconditioned and this one would be a spare one. I mean, this one worked just fine and everything, but getting a little bit of age on it. Um, actually, <laughs> doesn't even have a, you know, it has, it probably has 70, 80 hours on it actually. So if I remember right, my dad had put this one in with uh, the stainless steel liner right at about 100 hours. I remember running the boat and you'd firewall the thing and it would just start slipping like you wouldn't believe. You could still cruise the boat and everything, but wide open throttle, it would just sit there and cavitate real bad. So that's what I'm working on right now. I'm gonna about to throw this on the boat here. I just, uh, there's usually plastic bushings in here. I just actually made some bronze bushings. Uh, can see them in there. In fact, I have, I bought an extra one in just in case I screwed one up. Just made some out of these and it's the right diameter on the ID, uh, the, OD, the OD on them I had to uh, chuck up in there, just cleaned up and everything and uh, take a file to them and file a pair of calipers and kept filing and spinning them and filing them until they were the right diameter. This side was a little bit chowdered out on the, uh, the aluminum was, so the stock uh, bushing that goes in there uh, was pretty loose. So I just went ahead and it, it was gonna need to be an oversized bushing. I know some guys actually, they'll bore them out. There's some shops that'll bore them out, put uh, bronze bushings in them, a little bit tight. It'll wear in, no clearance fit, but um, yeah, I mean, the stock plastic bushing was just not going to cut it and everything anymore. It was kind of radly. So I just went ahead and made a bronze one from both sides. But, yeah, that's, uh, oh, uh, yeah. I know there was something else I was going to say here, but, yeah, kind of excited to actually get the thing out on the water. Uh, I don't have an assistant here to run the switch up there for, uh, showing you this actuating up and down um there is a guy out there i had actually uh messaged him a couple times he's got a 175 with with another brand one of these uh, the brand name uh, uh it's a southern jet i think that they make for the sport jet as well real similar setup and everything I think it's, I think his YouTube channel is like Tuner Tube 780 or something. I messaged him and everything and about how he likes it. And uh, he seems to love it. And he's got a lot of 30 second clips of his boat shooting a nice little rooster tail behind it. So, and if you're curious, this right here is a helm operated stomp grate. And this is, it works, but it's kind of. <laughs> The way this this thing's always been kind of a pain in the ass to yeah there you know you can see how it's the sh 
sheathing is separated out there. It's just been a pain in the ass trying to keep that thing together. It's broken off in there. It works. You know, it's nice to have, in fact, that's what this lever is. Right here, if you're familiar with jet boats, you got a and stomp grates. The grate itself underneath it, the intake grate. You can hit a, well, you can stomp on here, hence stomp grate. And it pushes down on these rods, lowering part of the grate to free up any rocks or debris that may be stuck down in there in the jet intake. So, yeah, it's, I think that's kind of like an SJX thing. I don't, actually, I don't even know if it's SJX puts them on from the factory or if this is something that the dealer here in Alaska does on his own. I mean, it's handy, but it's always a fight to keep it working correctly. I mean, you got this cable here that's pulling down, then you go over here and stomp on this. Well, then that cable's pushing on, you know, you're pushing on the cable. It's getting slack and such in it. And the way it's designed, it's going to end up coming apart. And it's not something really worth getting too far into to try to fix. I'm just happy that it's, everything's, oh, focus, everything's clearing and fitting okay. Oh, something else too, since I'm looking at it and everything. Um, on the, for a SJX install, this, uh, cylinder only come with, uh, two 90 degree brass fittings for the hydraulic lines. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't going to work on here. So I ended up having to get a straight one. Nothing big, that kind of stuff I can live with and everything. So, but we got them ran through there. Yeah, actually seems to work pretty good up and down when i'm actuating it and everything you can you can hear this this uh ram binding a little bit it might i might i think i got two choices if that starts really causing problems either like i said earlier notch that out or something else i found when i was doing kind of my mock-up is if i actually have a longer bolt right here to where this heim joint can actually slide up and down. It actually will take that binding out too. So I got a couple of options there. In any case, get this thing put together, see if I got any more uh, binding on my steering and everything, and then uh, see if I can't adjust out my uh, reverse bucket, see if it's not gonna clear that stream right there if I can't get it to. If not, I'll end up having to notch out that reverse bucket some more but i hope this actually helps somebody else out there like i said there's not <laughs> there's not a lot of information in fact damn near zero on these things i'll have to do a a little bit of a review this summer and everything when i actually can get the thing out in the water and it's going to be uh like i said be interesting be fun so in any case uh I have to throw some more Branson videos out there. I might go over my implements and everything I have. Uh, one of my two shop dogs. The other one escaped out the door. So, well, like, share, subscribe. Uh, hey, if if you've had something similar like this, or you got suggestions or ideas and everything, drop me a line in the comments. Uh, I'm definitely no fabricator, even though I got two welders there. I, I don't weld, I melt metal and every now and then the two pieces will stick together. <laughs> so yeah, so have a good day. Uh, if you got anything more that you like, anything you want to add, let me know in the comments. Thanks.